we're gonna take a journey across the pond to a bourbon I quite like. Let's jump in and have a look. What's happening guys? Welcome back to the Whiskey Shed. My name is John McGrath and I'm just a lad in a workshop sharing his whiskey journey with you guys on YouTube. Now I know I haven't put a video up in a while and I've been a little bit slow with my whiskey reviews but as they say life happens when you're making plans. But we're back with a favourite little bourbon of mine, uh, Bullet Bourbon Frontier Whiskey. So that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. So as always we'll jump in with a little bit of a history and a bit of story about the bottle of whiskey we want to taste and then we'll get on and taste it. So let's talk about Bullet Bourbon. Okay, so a little bit about the history of Bullet Bourbon Frontier Whiskey, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Now, I have to admit, I'm on pretty shaky ground once I start venturing outside of Ireland and start talking about the history of different places and different whiskies. But from what I understand, it was founded or started by Augustus Bullet. He was an innkeeper in the 1830s in Louisville, Kentucky, and he set about making his perfect whiskey. He tried lots of different recipes until he settled upon this particular mash bill and he was pretty successful selling this whiskey, as far as I know, between 1830 and 1860. Now, in around the 1860s, he disappeared without a trace. He was taking some whiskey from uh, Kentucky to New Orleans, and he and the whiskey disappeared. And I believe he was on a boat at the time, and the boat and all disappeared. So there's a couple of possibilities. Either he met a sticky end and someone stole all the whiskey, the boat sank, he sank along with it, or he stole the boat and he's the current hide and seek champion. Now it's one of those three options, I'm not sure which it is, but uh, who knows. But later on, his great great grandson relaunched it in 1987, Thomas E. Uh, bullet and he left a fairly successful law firm in order to get this whiskey back up and going and I'm glad he did because it is quite a nice whiskey indeed. It's a kind of a mid-priced or not a mid-priced but a low kind of low price uh, bourbon and it's relatively available and now it's one of the biggest selling bourbons in the world and it's currently owned by Diageo and they own almost everything including Guinness. So that's a little bit of history about Bullet Bourbon. That's about as far as I dare to go into it. So it's an interesting story. I wonder what really did happen to Augustus who started this uh, bullet Kentucky bourbon. So let's get in and nose and taste this whiskey. Okay, let's get this in the glass and we have a cork. So do we have a nice cork pop? Oh no, <laughs> the cork broke in the bottle. Lovely. I'll have to get that out of there now. Okay, let's try this again. We have a cork screw here. See if we can get this cork out. Now it's been out a few times, obviously, because I've tasted some of this and I've been drinking some of this. But uh, yeah, that's the first time I've ever had a cork break on a whiskey top. So there we go. Let's get it in the glass. Okay, so now that we've managed to mess up the bottle, and I'm going to leave it like this for the rest of the video, we'll uh, nose and taste it. Now, I should just say it is 45% ABV or 90 proof. It's made from a mash bill of 68% corn, 28% malted or 28% rye and 4% malted barley so from what I understand that's quite a high rye content for a bourbon and I'm certainly no expert on bourbon but most bourbons I believe from what I've read have about 8 to 10% rye content so it's quite a high rye content in this so on the nose So on the nose, really, really nice. This is right up my street, I have to say. It has a lovely orange peel to it and there's a lovely spicy quality to it, almost like a herbal medicinal note. There's a nice green note in there too. A candied kind of sweetness I get from it. Maybe a little hint of vanilla and toffee. And there's a good punch of a kind of an oaky character to this. So it has a kind of a lovely sweet and spice thing going on. And I really like Irish single pot still whiskey. You guys will know that. I'm always banging on about it on this channel. And that has a lovely spicy quality from the unmalted barley that they mix in. Now I'm thinking that the spicy character comes from the rye in this, which is why I kind of really like this. A sweet and spicy whiskey is right up my street. And uh, yeah, for the money in around 35 euros, this is quite nice. So orange peel, a nice candied sweetness. I'm getting um, a nice kind of medicinal herbal spice equality which I believe comes from the Roy. So yeah, quite a pleasant nose. So on the palate. It's 
So on the palette, really, really nice. Obviously, I like this for 35 euros, like I've said. You get a big hit of sweetness up front. Again, that kind of candy sweetness, almost tipping over into a honeyed sweetness, I would say. Then a big hit of oak, and then comes that spice. And it really does remind me of, like I said, the Irish pot still kind of spiciness that you get. And it even has a real kind of oily feel. I'm not sure if that's typical of most bourbons, but this one has that kind of high oily viscosity that you get from Irish pot still. And uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, very, very similar, I have to say, in that regard. So very similar. So yeah, on the palate, it's kind of finishing with some licorice now, so it has a little bit of staying power. So really nice and sweet then a big hit of oak, then that spiciness comes through, a little bit of peppery heat at the back, and finishing with a nice bit of licorice. So, very, very nice. And I can see why this is um, a big hit in cocktails. Actually, one of my favorite cocktails is an old-fashioned, and I always use Bulla Bourbon to make an old-fashioned. I think it's the best one on the market for doing that. And you can see why this is probably the biggest selling bourbon in the world, or it's one of them anyway. So as always, we leave this on its side for 10 minutes, let it open up, see if we can pull anything else out of it. And uh, yeah, let's leave it for 10 minutes and we'll see what we get. Okay, so let it sit on its side as always for about 10 minutes. Just let it open up and see what else we can pull out of it. So on the nose, the oak now is definitely a little bit more to the forefront. I'm getting now, then a really nice, that really nice sweet note. It is that candy sweetness that you get from the corn. And for me, it's just the right level of sweetness. Any more than this, and it might be too sweet, but I think this just gets that balance of spiciness and sweetness right, like I've said. So yeah, the spice is still there. I'm still getting that medicinal kind of note. It's almost like deep heat. I don't know if you ever smell that deep heat spray that you spray on muscles and stuff like that when you get a bang playing in sport. But uh, just a hint of that kind of in the background. That's the kind of medicinal note that I'm getting and that kind of spicy quality that you get from the rice. So, very, very nice. On the palate. Yeah, on the palate now, the oak has definitely really come to the forefront, so I'm getting that big oaky punch from it now. Sweetness has kind of died back a small bit on the palate, I have to say, and then finishing again with that lovely kind of spiciness, with possibly a little hint of licorice there now. So very, very nice all in all. I would say I really like this one. Again, for 35 euros, I think that's a great price uh, for what it is. It's a real crowd pleaser and it mixes great in cocktails. I've had loads of this stuff over the years in old fashions and I really like it. It's kind of a favorite bourbon of mine. I'm definitely kind of tending towards the Roy side of bourbons maybe. So that's kind of an avenue I want to explore. I might try the Bullet Roy next and uh, see how that goes and then try maybe a few high content bourbons because yeah, that kind of level of sweet and spiciness is right up my street. So there we go. Okay, guys, so there you go. That's been my review or opinion for what it's worth on Bullet Bourbon Frontier Whiskey, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And I have to say, I really like this bottle. I like the raised lettering. I love the shape of it. It just kind of reminds me of something out of a Western. I, uh, I really like it, and it feels really nice in hand as well. So there we go, guys. Now, I know, like I said, at the start of the video, I haven't been keeping these videos coming as regularly as I would like, but as I said, life happens when you're making plans. So I'll try and get more of these whiskey videos or reviews up for you guys because you seem to be enjoying them. I'm trying to get them more regularly as I can, but I've just been very busy over the last few months. But we will leave you with a toast or a kind of a rhyme this time. So uh, another little Irish rhyme. So I drink to your health when I'm with you. I drink to your health when I'm alone. I drink to your health so often I'm starting to worry about my own. So slant your mouth, Makara. I shall see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, take it easy out there, guys. It's kind of a crazy world at the minute. But uh, yeah, bullet bourbon, uh, Kentucky straight bourbon. Very, very nice. And for 35 euros, you can't really go too far wrong. Yeah, lovely, sweet and spicy quality to it. Mix is great. Very, very nice.